This is Rain Hamcast number 58, hosted January 8th, 2022. I'm Will Rogers, K5WLR. Holding a technician class license can be a frustrating experience trying to locate accurate resources for learning what you can and cannot do. Anthony Luskry, K8ZT, is one Midwestern ham who has endeavored to provide instructional materials targeting the new and hungry ham on one website called ZT Learn. Now retired from a career in providing computer instruction for teachers and students, Anthony hosts his ZT Learn website, tiny.cc forward slash FDSD, Field Day Social Distancing. For the next two Rain Hamcasts, we will bring you excerpts from a virtual forum presentation Anthony produced and delivered during the QSO Today August 2021 Virtual Ham Expo. It is called Technicians, Life After Local Repeaters and Activities Not Just for Technicians. Here is our first excerpt from that presentation. The purpose of this presentation is to help you maximize your on-air experience. Maximize the use of your current privileges by going beyond the local repeaters. Explore new modes. Explore new bands. Explore new activities. And most of all, have more fun. Some common myths about the technician license. VHF and UHF repeaters are the only activity. Definitely not the case and we'll explore what are, what are the options. There are no HF privileges. Well, there certainly are and we'll talk about those also. Only code experts can make CW contacts. You can get started before you're an expert and definitely make contacts. There is no way to work BX. That's definitely not the case and we'll give you plenty of examples. Six meters and 10 meters are always dead. Well, sometimes they're dead, but not always. And we're actually moving into a sunspot maximum where there'll be great bands to work lots of DX. You can't work FT8 and FT4. Yes, you can, and we'll talk about the bands on which you can do that. And microwave bands are useless. Well, only if you don't know what you can use them for, and we'll talk about some possible uses and ways to enjoy those with your license. Current situation, it's just some informal observations. Most techs limit their operations to VHF and UHF repeaters, and occasionally simplex FM. Many get their license but fail to get on the air, or get on the air and burn out quickly. Some upgrade their licenses, but many do not. Sadly, some drop out of amateur radio completely. Hopefully, we can get past some of those problems today. The current situation involves a changing situation on VHF and UHF repeaters over the last 15 years. There's greatly decreased activity. Cell phones, texting, email, etc. have replaced the connectivity provided by repeaters and auto patch. My wife and I spent many years with our main way of communicating with each other was via the local repeater. We now have the ability to do that same type of connectivity through our cell phones. Digital repeaters, DMR and D-Star and C4FM are taking the place of many common analog repeaters. What about HF? Well, earlier novice and technician licensees on air activity typically included HF contacts in the CW subbands. Tech enhancement in the 1980s added 10 meter phone and data privileges. But the 10 meter band is highly dependent on sunspot activity levels and often limited to local contacts only. It seems that some of the excitement of getting that first license may have faded along with the FCC's melding of paper licenses. To keep the excitement, it is important that techs and other licensees in a rut get involved in a variety of amateur radio activities. Mentoring, not just licensing new hams, should be an essential part of all radio clubs. The current tech license privileges include HF, VHF, and UHF. HF on the 80 meter, 40 meter, 15 meter, and 10 meter bands, with 80, 40, and 15 only having CW privileges, and 10 meter being limited to just por portions of the band. On VHF and UHF, technicians have full privileges, 6 meters, 2 meters, 220, 70 centimeters, and up. 
unfortunately they don't realize that there's a lot more to these bands than just local to me uh local vhf uhf repeater activity these bands can be great for long distance communication single sideband contesting even contacts with space via satellites this is a uh, abbreviated version of the AWRL web uh, pages U.S. Amateur Radio Bands chart. I've just condensed it down to show the privileges for technicians. And you'll notice the three HF bands with CW only permissions. We'll talk about how you can start using those very quickly and easily and increase your bands by many. So we'll explore new modes single sideband on 10 meters, 6 meters, 2 meters and up, CW on the 80, 40, 15 and 10 meter bands, digital modes FT8, RIDI, PSK on 10 meters and 6 meters, fast scan TV is available on UHF and microwaves. We won't talk much about it today because it's a specialized topic and another specialized topic, Wi-Fi, uh, also known as the Arden uh, net using UHF and microwaves. But there's also new bands to explore that you may not have explored yet, HF, on single sideband on 10 meters, HFCW on 80, 40, and 15. VHF, you may not have tried six meters out. Uh, six meters has a wide variety of activities you can try, 220 and microwaves. Some new activities. Uh, even if you're using the local repeaters um, for two meter or uh, UHF activity, try out simplex. See how far your radio can reach without using a repeater. Try out satellite operation on the uh, VHF UHF bands. Contesting is available on these bands and many new technicians don't realize that. You can even do summits on the air and parks on the air activity with these bands. Uh, DMR is another type of repeater operation but it greatly increases your distance capability through linked repeaters. Echolink, APRS, and fox hunting are other great activities and fox hunting is available to anyone even unlicensed hams can go out and hunt. So what can technicians do? Well, you have two choices, and they're not either or. You can do both of them if you'd like. First, you can upgrade to general class and higher and get more privileges. But while you're waiting for that, think about maximizing your use of the current privileges by going beyond the look repeaters. So let's start with 10 meters, also known as the magic band. Unlike 10 meters, techs have full privileges, all modes and all frequencies on all of six meters. Six meters can provide regional and even DX when conditions are favorable. High sunspot activity uh, ionizes the F layer and can provide very long distance contacts. But when sunspots, uh, when the sunspot activity is low, there's still a sporadic E layer activity known as sporadic E skip. And that can happen anytime, although it's more common during the summertime, but it isn't dependent on the current sunspot activity. Most newer HF radios also include six meters. And for more information on HF radios in general, I put together another slideshow. It's at tiny.cc slash buy AR. And it has lots of information on different radios that are available for both HF, VHF, and UHF. Uh, gain antennas are easily manageable in size on six meters, but even a dipole or J pole will work uh, plenty of stations on six meters. Single sideband and digital modes, including FT8 and FT4, two of the hottest modes out there, are the most popular. But there's also CW and FM, uh, both simplex and repeater activity on six meters. I put together a number of six meter resources to get, get you started. First of all, is a great free ebook available from K5ND called Capture the Magic of Six Meters. Uh, there's also K5ND's excellent website. Uh, some links on six meter antennas including a six meter coaxial dipole antenna, AKA a flower pot antenna, and also information on building a simple six meter Moxon antenna, which has gain and is very easy to carry portable. 10 meters is the only HF band that has phone privileges for technicians. Uh, it is limited both in frequency and mode activity. Phone activity is only on single sideband it's only 28.3 to 28.5 megahertz. Digital activity, FT8, FT4, PSK, RIDI, and CW are all available from 28.0 to 28.3 in the appropriate portions of the, of the subbands. 10 meters can provide regional and even worldwide DX conditions 
when conditions are favorable with high sunspot activity. But again, sporadic E-layer activity can bring in surprise 10 meter long distance contacts at any time. Worldwide DXing during gr good times with su high sunspot cycles is very easy and you'll be shocked at how well it would work. But during sunspot lows, there's limited activity, distance, and less chance for tech voice contacts. The good news is, actually the great news, is that with the increasing solar activity, 10 meter propagation is looking up. We're at the bottom, so everything over the next five to seven years should be upward bound. Six meters and 10 meters when the sunspot cycle is low can be sometimes called dead bands. But again, there's quite often e-skip activity. And with FT8 and FT4, you can get great contacts even during low sunspot days. And I put together an article you can read on that. When we're looking at 10 meters, uh, if you're thinking about getting involved in single sideband on 10, voice on 10 meters, remember it's only single sideband. So 10 meter FM or AM only radios available from what I'll refer to as CB vendors are often of no use. Uh, they'll, they'll talk about the great things about them, but they're basically just glorified CBs. And because they don't cover single sideband, they're not very helpful. Even if they do cover single sideband, they have more CW, CB features than amateur radio uh, type features. Things that are ch they're channelized, they have Roger Beep, Squelch, no antenna tuner, no ability to do uh, computer interfacing. And they don't provide six meters or other bands for when you upgrade to a general. So even though they may seem tempting, you might want to bypass all the CB type 10 meter only radios. Because almost all real ham transceivers include single sideband 10 meters, you can often buy cheaper used or older equipment which have not only 10 meters but many bands on them that you'll be able to take advantage of when you upgrade. Many of the ham multiband HF transceivers also have 6 meters which 10 technicians can use. So you can get on 10 and 6 immediately when you pick up a radio like this. Newer model radios may make it, make it easier the use of FT8 and FT4, but it's very easy to do it by adding a simple interface and I have a whole presentation on FT8 and FT4 if that's what you're interested in. 220 megahertz UHF and microwave bands. There's lots of open space with very little activity in many areas, but it's great for experimentation. All you need is at least one other operator to make QSOs. Uh, the best time to find activity on these bands is during the contest periods. They double all runs three uh, VHU UHF contests during the year, plus there's activity days for microwave bands and, and uh, 220 and other bands. Special modes such as Wi-Fi are a great way to utilize the microwave bands. And I have a whole presentation here on getting started in amateur, in amateur microwave radio for you to read. VHF, UHF, single sideband activity. To, in addition to the 10 meters and single side, 10 meters and 6 meter single sideband, on VHF and UHF, single sideband is also used for weak signal work, contesting satellites, and as Bob Witt is demonstrating here, uh, summits on the air using uh, VHF. And uh, Bob's book, uh, Getting Started on Two Meter Single Sideband, can be a great starter, and he has lots of information if you click the link. Single sideband activity usually uses horizontally polarized antennas versus the vertically used antennas on FM, so you, you might uh, consider that when you're thinking about getting on these bands. Sampling the HF single sideband activity. Anyone without an HF receiver or an antenna capable of HF reception can use the free online tunable SDRs, uh, software defined receivers to listen to ham, single sideband and CW QSOs worldwide. And I have a whole presentation at tiny.cc slash OSDR and a quick start guide at free RX. Both of those will help you get an idea of what's on the HF bands without having to buy a radio or even put up an antenna. Let's talk about CW for, for a while. Or having fun with HF uh, using Morse code. Originally, the novice CW allocations on 80, 40, and 15 were available to techs, and they still are. Most techs don't are not trained in using CW. Many of them don't even know these uh, privileges are available to them. Unfortunately, there's not much activity on these portions of the band. There's greater activity on the lower portions of the CW segments, but during field day and other contest weekends, even the higher ends fill up. So if you can get on during 
in these segments during those times, you can make easy contacts with very little CW experience. I put together a whole slideshow called Fun with Morris, and you can go to that at tiny.cc slash FWM and learn all about uh, different options you have as a technician using Morris code. If you are interested in learning a code, one of the best ways is to have a buddy help you learn. If you get a friend to learn with in a class or in person, or even across on the air, it's much easier. Now, fortunately, there's two very active online learning uh, centers for CW. The CW Academies run something called CW Ops, and they run classes three times a year. The Long Island CW online classes require you to join their club, but they have classes almost every day during the week that you could just jump into the, through their schedule. So consider CW Ops or Long Island CW online classes if you're thinking about getting your license. By the way, the Long Island uh, CW classes have special classes for youth only, and those are completely free. So if you're a younger uh, person and thinking about CW, Long Island CW is a great way to get started. The digital modes are probably the fastest growing amateur radio mode, FT8, FT4. They're good with weak signals, poorer antennas, and poor propagation conditions. So they're a good candidate to try out on 10 meters, 6 meters, and 2 meters. You won't find a lot of activity on 2 meters except during the HF, I'm sorry, the VHF contest, but you can find some activity. Only a few years old, these, it's highly likely that many similar uh, uh, digital modes will be continued to be developed. And I have a whole presentation on FT8 and FT4, uh, the so-called digital sound card modes for you to go through. Other digital modes that are available are PSK31 and RIDI. Uh, these you'll mainly find on 10 meters when you're talking about technician, uh, when you're talking about technician uh, availability. Simplex FM is a little bit different than repeater operation, and it's great practice for emergency communication. Often it doesn't require any radio. If you're already using a radio on the local repeater, you can use it for simplex. You can experiment with different antennas and amplifiers to increase your signal capability. Because you're not working through a repeater, sometimes it's very important to get a much better signal on there to make contacts. Many local clubs and organizations hold 2-meter FM simplex contest or activity days on a regular basis. And you can monitor the simplex frequency to start out. 146.520 is the uh, nationwide simplex uh, two meter frequency. I have some videos on that available on simplex operation. And I have a, a little bit of a guide on using simplex. The simplex frequencies available in different states uh, di on two meters vary by different states. So take a look at the color coded chart and then find your section, whether it's 15 uh, kilohertz spacing or 20 kilohertz spacing. But you'll notice that both sets have uh, common frequencies. So if you stick to the green frequencies or the red frequencies, those will be available in all the different states. Satellites in space. With rare exceptions, a few older HF satellites, all satellite privileges are available to technicians on 2 meters and, and, and 440 and above. The main satellite types are low Earth orbit FM-based satellites, low Earth orbit linear transponders with single sideband and CW, higher orbit linear transponder satellites, geosynchronous orbit satellites, which unfortunately there's none available from North America, and also occasionally the space station does contacts and they also have a digi repeat digipeter that you can work through and sometimes they have other specialty modes so don't rule that out these are all available for technicians to operate there th i would suggest starting out with the low earth orbit fm satellites they're a great starting point they're easier to use you can often use your existing dual band ht to operate these by adding a small gain antenna Compact and expensive gain antennas can either be built or purchased. It's a great area to explore with youth operators. Uh, Sean KX9X has put together a series of blog posts that are great on getting started with satellites. He also has corresponding YouTube videos to go along with those. So if you follow his practical information, you can get on the air in no time with a satellite operation. The components that you need are a dual band 2 meter 440 uh, FM HT uh, mobile radio or other radio, the, the ASU 991, FT8 
18, ICOM 705 are all great radios and there's more available. You also need a commercial or DIY satellite antenna. The aero antenna is very popular, but the $4 ham radio satellite antenna has a link here uh, for building it and it will work just fine. There's even a site with links to modify it to improve it even better. So there's a variety of uh, cheap, inexpensive antennas you can build yourself to get on satellites with your HT. So no no additional cost. This has been the first of two excerpts from Technicians, Life After Local Repeaters and Activities Not Just for Technicians, a virtual address given by Anthony Luskri, KHZT, during the August 2021 QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo. We'll bring you our second excerpt from this presentation in Rain Hamcast number 59, scheduled for posting January 22, 2022. The Rain Hamcast is copyright 1985-2022, Rain, the Radio Amateur Information Network. All rights are reserved. All are welcome to transmit this Hamcast over amateur radio. Thanks for YouTube technical assistance from Tom Shimizu, N9JDI. Oh, before we go, just an attaboy to Rain founder and producer Hap Holly, KC9RP, for finally getting podcast recognition and distribution for the Rain Hamcast. Hap had help from Joe Cass, W0CAS, and Mark Davis. That's all for this time. I'm Will Rogers, K5WLR, bidding you very 73 from Rain, the radio amateur information network. Keep on hamming.